Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're going to stray a little bit into fantasy. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. And you guys loved it. Well, I'll tell you, first of all, two of the people sitting on this panel have played D&D for decades. Extensively. Extensively. And That's it, right. And I, I have, I know it, I have and, played. And Bob is I'm with just, those people who have played. I, I played multiple campaigns a yeah. long time ago. But do you These guys love it, just Bob? Do you love it? I thoroughly enjoyed it when I played it, but I grew up. You are, oh. not, you are not no. qualified to review. No, this these movie. guys, you guys are like uber, uber. Right. We're, we're tabletop but, role players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll say this. Yes, I had no expectations. I think you I guys had very agreed. low expectations. We, you know, from watching the previews, I we were had, like, this movie could suck so horribly bad. This movie did not suck. This movie. It not was at all. It I was had, a fun ride. Absolutely. A fun ride. I had middling expectations because I saw mm-hmm. some reviews. I saw the, the the preview on TV, and I was like, my hopes were getting kind of high, and they were they were met but, or exceeded. But there there are, there are things that this movie did well, and there are things this movie did not do well. So well, first I mean, off, the directors, yeah, c- clearly love D and D. Yeah, they, they they get it. They have played D and D. They enjoy D and D. They. D and D, real D and D, is throughout this entire movie. A lot of it comes from Forgotten Realms. Mm-hmm. A lot of it comes from just just D and D itself. Yes. This the creatures, characters. If you're looking right at right out of the manual, if you're looking at a character or a creature, chances are that is lifted directly right from yeah, it. Sure, I think they really did. They paid homage to real D and D. This wasn't just like inspired. This was like the real absolutely stuff. when the magicians were casting spells. You can identify what spells they were casting. Right. You know, Kona Cold and, and the Magic oh, every, Hand and all the all every spe- one they came but, up with. If you go online, you will find every character from the movie and their stats and this and mm-hmm. the spells. For Wait the, a second, though. I mean, they really. The, but the main character, the Bard, the Bard, who wasn't a Bard. Well, he was. He was, he was the Bard. He was but, Bard. But he, he wasn't was a Bard. But he did not display any Bard magic. There was no Bard magic. Yeah. But he really. What I found funny is that he had no skills. He was mm. just a planner. He was just a guy that can come up with plans. He he was classless. He didn't he didn't have a class in a movie that was filled with people who were very very specifically a class, which Maybe I thought was could interesting. Could he be a low level bard? No, no, Bob. I mean, <laughs> that, but that's it's almost a, it's like a, a deliberate joke that they did. Mm-hmm. This guy doesn't have a class. He shouldn't even be in the movie because he's not a D and D character. But they kind of joked about it. In, so like the the druid says, and what do you bring to the table? And, and yeah, he says he, it. No, he says, I'm the planner. The, I'm the guy who's going to make the plan. So, so then you've made the plan. So why, what, why do we still need you? Sometimes the plan what, goes so, bad. Yeah, sometimes so you make plan bad goes, plans? <laughs> I was that sure was he fun. was going to be a thief. I was positive he was going to end up being a rogue because he didn't do yeah. anything with his instrument. Like if he, if he was going to be a bard, you know, bards play songs and you give people encouragement or they, you know, they, they can do magical effects with their yeah. music. If he was going to do it, it would have happened earlier in the show. It didn't yeah. happen. Um, so I love the aesthetic. It totally had the D and D thing. I'll tell you my favorite part of this entire show, other than the the one Easter egg that we'll get to that I really liked, was I liked the villain, Forge or the the female. The female, yeah, she was fantastic. Her character was cool. You know, she was evil. She was clever. She powerful. was very powerful. You know, I loved the reveal at the end when you know I'm sure mm. the, it was your favorite part of the movie. Um, mm. You know, she was you know spoilers of course. She was undead. She was basically yeah. a lich, pretty much. You know, she should have been more powerful, actually, than she was. I mean, time stops are really powerful. Time, yeah. <laughs> that's like ninth level, isn't that? Like, that? Yeah. you can't get much more powerful right. than yeah. that. And it level? did take the entire party to take her out. Yes, which, which is, you and know, they needed a good plan. So yeah. it's a good thing they had a plan. That's the right. Party. They did right. have a good right. plan, and that worked well. <laughs> my so two, are, my two favorite yes. things. All right, guys. I know, I know what they the, are. I know what they are. Speak with the dead. Yes. I was like giggling like a little kid, cause waiting for them to talk to the dead. And the dead were the, the corpses that were animated were good. Although I was hoping for a one notch better, like some maybe even some real CG animated corpse that isn't a guy in makeup, yeah. but still a funny and one of the most funny scenes. Of it the was entire the funniest movie. part of the funniest movie. Funniest part. The other thing, gelatinous cube. Um, I was waiting. I was so excited to see the gelatinous cube because when do you see a gelatinous Steve, cube? Steve, what did you it's, think about that though? They went into a gelatinous cube. Oh my god, that was kind of silly. I you think you can't because, get out of one if we, when you're in one, it's so hard to get out of it, and it should have been melting their flesh immediately. That was a problem. They were in there. I was like cringing because they were in there far too long. Yeah, they couldn't but they breathe were pulled in out. There. They were pulled out. But you I mean, can't. They, they were. They were. They're essentially holding pull. their breath the whole time. 
So that was a but that, it was cool. It was fun to see it, yeah, and everything. But the thing didn't move. Mm-hmm. It didn't even. It wasn't yeah. even a living creature at that point. It was basically True. jello. That's and, basically what they had. Right, and the other with acid inside. And the other famous, the other great thing, of course, was a mimic. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was a lot of fun. Classic. That was, that was fun. a lot of fun. Um, the uh, the other creature that I I thought was fantastic was the displacer beast. Mm-hmm. That was like the jaguar wow, that had the two tentacles coming yeah. off. Of they did back. that really well. They really did it well, and it was funny because I didn't. I never really thought about the fact that the tentacles are what create. Mm-hmm. The, the oh, illusions no? yeah it's basically casting an illusion yeah. using those tentacles but they showed in the movie which was a really cool idea is that the, there was actually magic coming off oh, of the, the tentacles yeah, very they, very cool and Thumberchaw, the obese dragon which of course also lifted right out of i think forgotten realms or something in deity the, the, the you know the incredibly obese dragon red dragon that was fed people so much that he couldn't even walk or fly but he could slide down his uh mm-hmm. you know the, the cave yeah. or whatever that was hilarious he, that was such a fun scene. it took me that it, that creature in particular took me out of the movie a little bit because i found myself thinking like how did he get so fat they, he, fed, him people. they fed him people like who's they that's part that's part of his whole lore that's part of his whole history it wasn't in the movie it's 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 real it wasn't in the movie though dragons eat people though, i think they that. mentioned it they I don't no, know. No, I don't know. But it's yeah. it's based on a re, on something that's actually part of okay. Part of the world. I mean, I, I honestly um, don't. I I never read that, so I don't know who he was. I mean, I'm sure if if I knew of that dragon, I would have really liked to see it. But, but I think that the D the D and D fan service was the perfect amount. It oh my a, god! It was enough without leaning too heavily on it or getting too you know tropey or cliche. Yeah. Uh, the storytelling is solid A minus. I mean, I, just from the opening scene, you know when. He's pleading, you know, for his case to be let free. Again, you know, we'll be talking about this more when we do an episode on storytelling. It was a great way to reveal information to the audience while telling us a lot about the characters. Yes, yeah. It was like and his character sheet. He was yeah, his it was, sheet. it was, it was very, it was a lot of fun and you know, went in unexpected, uh, you know, directions. And of course, they bring it back at the end in a very, very funny way. Uh, so, and then throughout the movie, I thought the storytelling had very good. You could, they, they, there were tropes throughout and they, most of them sort of worked. They didn't all completely work, but, uh, the, um, but you know, the, the story had me compelled the whole time. I was oh, interested man. in what was going to happen next. But, so it was very, very good. But on that note, yes, I wasn't like, I wasn't feeling this movie as much as I like to feel movies. Right. Yeah. I didn't really care that much. You know, I didn't care that he was separated from his daughter the amount that I should have cared, right? This all because comes it was down... a lighthearted movie. I mean, I... but you could still have it be comedy, and you could still have it yeah. be lighthearted, and still feel the feels, mm-hmm. and and it just wasn't there enough. I, did... I thought it was. I, I, I disagree. I mean, at the, the people... at the end, that the resolution at the end, and the decision that the mm-hmm. the, the, the bard makes with his daughter brought a tear to my eye. That was moving. That You uh, cried in the uh, D&D I movie? Said it, I, I said it brought a tear to my okay, eye. Okay, that's good. Um, it was moving. It was It was that decision he makes, to me, really tied it up into a nice bow that really, like, if you could bring that into into the movie as well as the the fun and the action and the, and the fantasy, to me, that was a great, a great addition to the, to the movie. I was, I was not as enthusiastic as you guys. I enjoyed it. I really mm-hmm. did. If they came out with another one, I'd watch it and I'd be oh, happy. Oh, they will. To, it's going, doing very well. Right? But I, I I wasn't sitting on the edge of my seat, you know. All the it wasn't ki- that kind of movie. It, it really. wasn't. It didn't have enough. But that's what I'm saying. Like I needed a little bit more. I needed I needed to care a little bit more. You know, I didn't laugh as much. You know, it's a comedy. I, I chuckled a couple of times. Like nothing really got me. There wasn't anything really funny in there, right? I disagree. I and mean, it wasn't a laugh out loud funny movie. But the balance you know, was good. I, I thought the, the balance. balance was good. And there were parts of it, like you know. The other, the th- I think the things that, that were supposed to be funny, I was I- incredibly entertained by. Like when they do the speak with dead spell. That was great. And again, there's, there's a lot of meta commentary, like the kind of things we would say when we're playing around the table. Like why five questions? It seems a little arbitrary. Like if it is, it's completely arbitrary. Why five questions? Because it's all game balance stuff. That has nothing to do with like a real world. Right. You know? right. And then the, inter- the, what, the, the first corpse that they're interrogating and they're accidentally asking questions that are counting against the five questions. The thing is, 
if you've ever played the game, whether as a player or a GM, you could 100% see a GM doing that to their players. Right, so that... Right? And that's that's basically what that was. That felt like they were actually role-playing. It really yeah. did. And they did a good job, and that was and by was far fun. the best it scene really in the movie. Fun. It was the best scene in the movie, by All right, far. the other thing that I need to mention, I loved the paladin. Oh. I loved the paladin. They, they pulled off that character so yes. well. Because... I mean, yes, that's the trope, the paladin who's annoyingly and preternaturally heroic, but but this character pulled it off in a way that's just better than I've ever seen done before. And I was I was definitely hanging on everything he was yeah, going to do because it was good. just he was a very compelling character to watch. Yeah, loved formidable. it without seeming too oh, too much. Like it was pushing plausibility, but he didn't break it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I thought they. He hit the sweet spot with and that character. And then he character. walked away. And then he walked away when he was done. He was yeah. at, And he wasn't part of the group anymore. And even his walk away was funny. Well, yeah, they made funny, funny of how he was. Yeah. Is he going to go over the rock? Yeah. He went yeah, over the, the rock. rock. Yeah. What? It was but, good. But Pine, Chris th- Pine did, did very yes. well. He was good. He, he, no, he, he, he pulled it off. He killed that role. He, mm-hmm. he's, made, he's made for that role. And that's what it would be like to actually play D&D with him. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> that's exactly what he would do. All right. Now, there was one massive Easter egg Bring in this it. movie. Yeah. And I'm ashamed of myself. One massive of Easter this. egg. And I, <laughs> I am I, literally ashamed. I was the only person in the entire theater that picked up on the Easter egg. Really? Yes. How do you know? It because was... there were three people in the theater. <laughs> 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 All like, right. Hey, thank you for setting that up so perfectly, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I was the only person in that movie theater that saw the Easter egg. All right. I'm so mad at myself. I'll, I'll tell you guys what it is. So, and I'm reaching way back here. You, this yeah, is, this is this, reach. this Easter egg is only for people who are indoctrinated. But there was a cartoon in the 1980s called Dungeons and Dragons, and there was a group of kids that were brought into a Dungeons and Dragons world from riding a carnival ride. Mm-hmm. And they, coaster, e- yeah. they each were they, they their characters were literally named their character classes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you're the you're bard. You're the barbarian. You you're know a paladin. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that group was in the maze. That was there was two mm. groups that were in the maze the of death at the end. group with the costumes, the Everything. perfect costumes. It was them. And for some reason Steve and I didn't spot I it. I wasn't paying attention to them. It just I saw them, but I saw like it, nothing really leaped it out. Gel. It didn't yeah. gel. So, and I, I can't believe I missed it. It's so obvious when I look at the reruns. <laughs> so something ah. something occurred to me when I was talking to you guys a little bit earlier yeah. about this that I didn't want to tell you is that if those characters exist in the show then that means that was them. Yes. And that there is a dungeon master. Oh. Think about that. Imagine they, 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 they bring can't, him. They can't bring those. Th- those were those characters. It doesn't necessarily Stop, mean Stop. Let me that. finish my thought. <laughs> they those could. were those characters. Yeah. And it, if those characters were there, then, then their thing. backstory exists. So so I put it to you guys that that there is Jay, a yeah they've this been is, there since the eighties. This is the D and D cinematic universe. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, not necessarily cinematic. right. Not necessarily, you know, aligns with the cartoon and from so the eighties. And where was Uni? There was no Uni the Unicorn, Jay. And and who was the guy with the one horn? <laughs> the bad guy, the he was a good villain. Like Avenger Avenger or something. Or something. Yeah, cool. he was a good villain. He was cool. Um. <laughs> That's interesting, Jay. It'd be fun if they if they went along with that in the sequel. Yeah. If they come out with a sequel, it would be funny. Maybe they, maybe they, they get that. their own movie. They got I their don't own sequel. That, that but would didn't be awesome. some of them die? I don't think so. They were in that maze, man. That was deadly. That was a deadly maze. Did they kill off a couple? I don't remember now. I, I don't remember. A couple of them might have died. Yeah, but there's a dungeon long. master, so they're fine. They got resurrected. All right, All right so, enough of that. So <laughs> the key word here is fun. This movie it was, was a lot of fun. It was fun. You can't take it seriously. You can't take D and D seriously through the lens of this movie, right? But you you, just you be- can. You can. I think I would argue you can take it seriously because they, they, it's so it's so faithful in so many ways to D and D that that a lot of the fans love it, and you you're not gonna you know you're not gonna be like you know, somebody who's read the book and see the movie and be like, oh, this movie is so unfaithful. It's extremely faithful. I would, so I would say that you either if you're a fan of D&D or not a fan at all, you will enjoy it. Yeah, you don't have to know D&D at all yeah. to enjoy this Yeah, yeah there's just extra little doodads if you do. But all right, here's the other one, one, for me, one final comment on it. And Jay and I were talking about this earlier too, that, you know, the, the movie deliberately hit a certain zone in terms of the balance of comedy and drama and grittiness. And it's definitely a you know, a movie designed to appeal to a younger audience, no question, but also be nostalgic for older gamers like us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fine. And it did what it did, I thought, very well, thoroughly entertaining. But I do, and I know Jay does as well, enjoy grittier 
uh, styles, grittier movies more. Like The Witcher. Like The Witcher, right? Yeah. So imagine mm. this movie, but done like The Witcher, where it's totally serious. The The comedy is only a little bit here and there for relief, but it's really a drama. It's really an action, intense drama. I would love to see more of this movie, mm -hmm. but I would also love to see a D&D &D style yeah. movie that is Witcher style gritty. Like yeah. this is now... This is a hard campaign, not a fun-loving campaign. This is the kind of campaign where your characters are probably going to get killed at some point, and it takes itself very seriously. I would be totally open to that. As yeah, well. I think. I mean, look, we all like fantasy adventures. Yeah. We, you know, Lord of the Rings. We, you know, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things on TV that are already there. You know, so like mm. this is a this is a world of information. They could literally go here. Here is the backstory of the universe that you need to write a, yeah. a really compelling. You know. Hard hitting, mm -hmm. scary. You know, there's story. already so much world building out there in the D and D universe. I mean, there'd be so much source material to draw upon. Totally, oh, man. totally, absolutely. So go see this movie, guys. We really liked it. Definitely. I, I um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please join us on our website. You can go to Alpha Quadrant and the Number Six dot com, and we also have a Patreon. You can go to Patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the Number Six, and we will see you next week. Yeah.